I'm back. So there's a lot of different geometry types in um, Rhino, which is confusing to me, and I'm sure it's confusing to others as well. So what I'm hoping with this video I can do is kind of like lay down a clear foundation of the three different types of geometry you're primarily going to be using um, in, in Rhino, um, sort of the benefits of using each one of those, and then also the means in which you can swap um, between. So how can you convert from one geometry type to another, and why would you want to do that? I made this little chart, which I'm going to show on, on the screen here, um, that shows these the three different ones, NURBS, um, SUBD, and MESH. And since MESH and NURBS are more legacy, they've been in the software for a lot longer, I'm probably mostly going to focus on how SUBD will integrate with these other geometry types in Rhino and using Grasshopper to migrate between the two and when and why you'd want to do that. This is sort of just a foundational thing, but I think even advanced users will find this useful because I'm going to be showing like some quick tips on how to um, actually move between those cleanly. Uh, to, for example, take a sub D, invert it into a nice mesh, and how you could take a NURBS and turn that into a sub D, for example. Okay, let's jump right in and we're going to look at um, the NURBS to sub D compatibility first. You would probably use a conversion of NURBS to sub D when you want to use these more fluid organic modeling tools. Um, to add some levels of detail or whatnot. And then vice versa, you would actually want to convert sub D to NURBS, for example, to use a lot of um, Grasshopper's functionality with NURBS surfaces. And also to convert, for example, if you want to use a Boolean or split or trimming commands, you basically need to have NURBS surfaces. Uh, sub D doesn't exist like that. Um, so just to quickly run it through, Let's look at a simple NURB surface, um, which you will be seeing represented in black, by the way. Sub D will be blue, and whatever I'm using meshes will be orange, just to categorize it so we can kind of quickly visually. So if I just drag this out and copy, bring, make a copy, I'm gonna use the command called two um, sub D. And what this will do is it'll give me a, a, a series of options, and I'm not really gonna go into detail right now, I'm just gonna click enter, um, and what, and what you'll now see is that it's created a sub D that has approximated that um, that nerves geometry. Um, and it's not it's not perfect. If I zoom in, you will you will see that it it is not like a complete representation. And if you tweak those settings, you can get better results. Um, so there's always some sort of interpretation and, and of the edge loops. And you can work on this to make it potentially more accurate. But um, for now, let's just uh, leave it as is. Um, so now what you have is you do have a sub D and we can now start to begin to poly model this. For example, you could just drag these faces out and, and, and when I toggle with the tab button, you're switching between that um, hard mode and, and the soft um, mode. But let's just, let's just quickly um, subdivide this, bring in some more faces and just super quickly demonstrate what, what you can do um, I'm just going to extrude sub D. I'm extruding along the normals. So I've done, I switched my settings and now like if I can, uh, so it actually moves along each face is normal rather than in X, Y, or Z direction. Um, and, and so what you've seen is like super quickly, uh, we've been able to manipulate that sphere to something quite, quite interesting. I mean, it's not that interesting, but but just the gist of what you, how you can take that NURBS geometry to a sub D and allow for a lot of refinement. Um, and so what now happens if you bring that back to NURBS is, I'm gonna just copy it again and just type in two NURBS right here, enter. Um, yeah, let's just do that. And what you're gonna see is now we have this um, NURBS surface. That's, so it's the same geometric type as this. And, um, and, and you can use this uh, for your modeling. Now, one thing that I find that happens a lot, and I'm just gonna delete these guys um, and show some things that I've hidden over here, um, is, is that you will, you will take a, a sub D and when you bring it into that two nerves, so for example, uh, I don't know why I'm keeping these weird things there, I just like them. Um, these are all just super quick extrusions just from that same um, sphere, just, pulling things out, I'm extruding and then kind of blowing it out of uh, the water. Um, but so for example, if I take this guy, which is just a sub D surface, so if I toggle, it has some poly topology, really messed up. Um, but this is just for an example. So if I type in two nerves here, 
Um, now, actually, I don't want to delete it. What, uh, what I'm going to get is I'm getting a poly surface. And what you're going to learn in Rhino is that poly surfaces can be sometimes be problematic. This means that it's actually made up of multiple different surfaces. For example, if I hold down Control Shift and click on this surface, it's actually giving me that as a completely separate face than, for example, that, that, or that. Um, which is a bit annoying for certain things. Um, one of them being if I just jump quickly, jump into Grasshopper. Um, if I bring, if I want to, for example, use some sort of, um, let's actually make this bigger. If I want to bring in a sub D and, and I want to use, um, this, this uh, for example, in the lunchbox tools, which which is up here, this lunchbox toolkit, which has a lot of, for example, panelization. If I want to use this panelization, and I bring this into a sub D. Sorry. If I want to bring this into a sub D, I can often um, sub D's can be converted quite quickly inside of Grasshopper components, so it can t give me a B rep instantly within um, Grasshopper here. But a B-Rep isn't going to work with Lunchbox. You need it as a single surface. So the problem with this is, is you're going to see, I'll show you what it does do. So what it's doing is it's giving, if I'm just going to evaluate each one of these surfaces, it's going to give me a, a bunch of different surface points. So it's treating each sub D face as its own individual surface. So when I get all those normals of those faces, it's not what I want. I just wanted to be represented as one surface. So if I hide this again, I'm now going to quickly show you a nice tip on how to work with that. So, so I have here this poly surface. What I'm going to do is create another one. And what I'm going to do is um, uh, control shifts and hold down. And then I'm going to dupe all of these edges. And then you click enter and then I'm going to delete this. So now what I've done is I've basically extracted all of the ISO curves of that sub D. And a super quick little trick is to, to do this a network surface. And oh, this got dragged onto my other screen. But um, so you, with this network surface, it will rebuild your topology and your geometry as one single surface. So I just click OK. Look, now I have one open surface, which now if I go back into Grasshopper and bring this in as one surface, so if I bring this in as one surface, I can negate all this other stuff, like these guys. And now we have a sur single surface that's being triangulated. And if I hide this, and I hide the geometry and Rhino preview, what you can see is now we're actually able to triangulate and create interesting geometries and export sort of um, actual uh, geometry from that surface, which is, which is quite interesting. Um, so it is very powerful to know when you're going to want um, to actually rebuild that into a single surface. And that's just a quick tip on how when sub D gives you something that's not optimal, like a poly surface rather than a surface, you can use those network edges to, um, to fix that. OK, now we're going to move on to mesh uh, and sub D interoperability. So this one's big because they're both based on the same like system of, of quads, um, which allows there's a very seamless transition. And one thing you also notice is that on Grasshopper, there's not really any um, sub D tools. That's generally because they just treat it as a mesh in Grasshopper. So that's one of the things that you're going to be using when you're swapping between a mesh and sub D. So what we have here is a weird mesh I made. And so you can see we have one closed mesh. So super simple. You can type in two sub D. What's going to happen is I'm just going to click enter, not really go through the points. And what you're going to see is now we have a, um, a sub D. And you're going to probably want to do this um, probably for modeling, um, because it's really easy just to, to, to tweak and manipulate sort of um, your, your geometry. Um, however, you would like um, to do it. And, and, and you can use some of the, for example, sub D things like uh, reflect. So for example, I can just draw a plane and, and we can reflect geometry on that. And then if you remove, uh, I think it's remove symmetry. There it is. So, so 
basically I'm just showing you that that there's this really nice interoperability between um, mesh and um, and and your sub D on the left. Now to bring it back to um, mesh. It's a little bit more complicated. So if you use the, there's no two mesh um, command, which is a bit annoying. Um, so you'd have to use a normal mesh. And then all of a sudden you're prompted with this, which is not optimal because if you go towards the lower end, you're gonna see that the mesh you're gonna be given is not that simple, um, clean uh, variation of this. Um, so what you're gonna wanna do is actually, it uses a command called extract control polygon. And what this will do is it'll give you this mesh that's exactly the same as this guy in, uh, in hard mode. So that's sort of the Rhino trick is use that extra, um, extract render or extract control polygon, not the meshing tool when swapping, because you want to keep the same topology and structure. You don't want to start manipulating it like this. Um, so that's this is this is bad. So don't use that that mesh command. Use like the um, extract uh, control polygon. And if I just jump into Grasshopper just to quickly show you guys um, the uh, how how I would do this in Grasshopper is so so there are this mesh from sub D and um, here, let me just isolate this it's, uh, sub D and let's zoom it in here. So so I if I bring in this sub D into uh, into Grasshopper. Um, there's this mesh from sub D, um, and there's a density, right? So it's going to X bring, give me a mesh. Um, and I'm going to, and I'm going to do this and then let's see what happens when I bake. So now I'm going to bake this mesh and what grasshopper has successfully done is it has, um, it has introduced a whole bunch of new faces in, into, in this mesh, which is really quite annoying. So another trick I have is delete this component, never use it, mesh from sub D, and just plug your sub D into mesh. Um, and now you will get that exact mesh um, topology. And of course, if you want to smooth that mesh, you could then go and do and introduce new, um, you can do uh, Weaver or Catmull Clark, um, smoothing, for example, like this this um, and just smooth, let's just smooth it twice. And now you will be able to control that the, the amount of, um, I have to bake it first time. So I bake that, now I get that really complex mesh. But it's giving you control over that. And you can always go back and you know how many subdivisions have been added where the, just the two mesh, you don't know. Um, yeah, so I so I recommend using that um, nice little workflow, um, and 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 and, and vice versa. Uh, the mesh to sub E actually I shouldn't have deleted. Actually, I'll just use this one, that guy. Um, so this um, mesh I can just put in this mesh, and this will out output me a really nice sub D. You don't have to worry about it in this direction. Um, this direction uh, works out quite quite well. Um, yeah, one 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 like I guess. Just to super quickly show, let's just hide these guys. Um, so if we have this sub D, and I'm going to hide now my little sub D, and we have, so now we have this mesh, it's going to allow us to do a lot of um, quite nice, do you take advantage of some of the um, the, the tools in, in Grasshopper? For example, if I just grab this pick Weaver Bird picture frame, I can uh, easily plug my mesh in, into this and now look at these faces. And now actually, if I just even just turn this guy back on and just plug this guy in. So now this is exporting uh, a mesh and I'm gonna convert it back to sub D. So now all of a sudden when I'm here, I have a, a sub D. And if I just bake that, now we have a cute little um, sub D picture frame mesh. So you can maintain the logic of of the sub D and use it as a mesh as you would in Grasshopper, which is which is quite um, powerful. And, and I recommend sort of this this workflow: bringing sub D into Grasshopper, converting to mesh, doing everything, then exporting at the end to being a sub D again. Okay, that's all for um, sub D mesh. Let's look at um, NURBS mesh, which is the easiest and simplest one. Okay, from the interoperability between mesh and NURBS is. Kind of more interesting because mostly you're going to be using it for exporting um, geometry 
for example, polysurfs often don't work, for example, in game engines like Unreal. So in the process of exporting, you're going to be um, exporting those nerves geometry as meshes. Um, and this is quite simple. So I have a, a closed poly surface right here. And I mean, it doesn't have to be closed. It can be anything. And what I'm simply going to do is use the mesh commands. And this will allow me to control the amount of polygons. And you can preview, um, preview that setting. And then when you're satisfied sort of with the amount of polygons, the resolution you want, you can click OK. And now if I select this mesh, we have a mesh representation of um, that nerves. I'm gonna say this is almost impossible to edit um, because the topology is pretty destructive. It would be hard for me to go in there um, and, and, and do much um, at all. And even this converting this to sub D will not necessarily save you any time or anything because you'll have such a, um, the topology will be so dense that Unless you're adding micro detail, like little bumps, it's not, it's it just be a little bit too much, too destructive to simply try to move a few things up or down. Um, so what I, I, you don't often try then to take this to sub D. Um, so this is sort of uh, that, that the nerves to mesh geometry. And, and then just to show you, just for this, um, I'm gonna use this geometry for the other way around. So what we have here is we have a mesh. And for example, if you wanted to convert this into a, um, a nerve surface that's clean and smooth, or let's first just type in two nerves from this mesh. And what, you're gonna, what it's going to give you is a set of poly surfaces like this, which maybe you want. Maybe this is what you need for your fabrication model or, or, or to use in like a, a Boolean operation to subtract from another surface. So this could actually work. But if you wanted something more um, sinuous or... or like that sub D geometry we were looking at before, you'd actually want to, this is where you would, the two using sub D as a median between, um, between uh, mesh and nerves is quite nice because I can take that, that mesh and I would have done is just done a two sub D operation and now I can do that two nerves um, operation. And now we have something that looks like this. So it's just using sub D as the, the middleman between your, your, your mesh and your nerve surface. And you have now a, a, a poly surface, which you have here as well. Um, so it's just two different ways of getting two completely different results from your um, mesh and nerves um, conversion. Yeah, anyways, I think that's it for today. Um, let me know if you have any questions, please like and subscribe, you know how it is. Um, and ask any questions in the comments. I'm always down there trying to help out. Um, yeah, I'm good to be back. See you guys around.